This right here is the top five things that new investors should never do. And I'm going to break down all five right now. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. The first one is taking advice from people who are unqualified to give financial advice, to give investing advice, to give investing tips. Please, please don't do it because I've seen this cost people thousands of dollars at a time. What do I mean by someone who is qualified? I mean someone who has verifiable experience, has investing experience, and has investing expertise, true investing expertise. Now, it does not mean that the person has to 100% have a degree. It also doesn't mean that just because you have a degree or some letters behind your name, doesn't mean that you're gonna be perfect all the time. I have made mistakes. People on TV make mistakes. People who write books make mistakes, okay? No one is perfect. However, people who don't have real investing experience or advisory experience give bad advice more often than not because they don't ask the right questions and they don't have enough context. I've seen people with 50,000 followers, 60,000 followers give advice about what they think the stock market is going to do. I've seen people say that a Roth IRA, an investing account, is just as safe as your bank account. I've heard people say the S&P 500 is a bank account. That ain't true. They have more followers than me, that's fine, right? But that was not true, and that is dangerous advice, telling people that the stock market never falls. And they felt that way because they started investing in 2020 right when the market was going up, and they had never seen a down year until recently, and their tone changed, or they just vanished off of the internet altogether. Okay, so you want to be very careful about that. What I like to do is you know, Googling the person and really kind of digging through pages one and two of Google usually helps. Checking them out on LinkedIn every now and then might help as well, but you wanna make sure that they went to school where they said they went to school. If they did, they have those licenses, make sure those licenses are real. We can do a video if y'all wanna go more in detail about researching people and how you can know whether someone is real or not, but they have to have real experience. It has to be something that's verified. Everything I say on this channel, you can verify somewhere. Right, you know that I've, I've worked at at City. I've worked at Capital One. You know, I write for Fortune, for Business Insider. I got awards, right, for for the content and things that we do. You want to be verified and, and just make sure that the person who is speaking is right more often than not, and it, they it, they are someone that you can trust. Okay, all right. Next one here is waiting to pay off debt. You do not want to wait to pay off all of your debt before you start investing. I know some people feel it is better, but financially and mathematically, it is not always better. And I'll give you this from a CFP, Certified Financial Planner, that I interviewed for an article that I wrote for Fortune, okay? That's credibility, things you can verify. You can check that article out when it comes out. Uh, but basically he said, you know, for someone who's in their 30s, by the time they're 65 and they're ready to retire, they have about 1,500 paychecks for the average nine to five person. Well, guess what? If you wait 10 years to invest, you don't have 1,500 paychecks. You got less, right? Let's say it's 650. Let's say it's 500 paychecks left. Well, that means that you're not gonna be able to invest as much. If you're not able to invest as much and you don't have enough time to invest or as much time as someone who's in their 30s or even their 20s, you're going to have less money. And it's because you waited and did not invest at all until you had paid off all of your debt. A better option is to try and balance those things and pay off your debt and invest. Even if I have to pay off, let's say, you know, the majority of my debt and I can only invest 5% of my income. That is better than zero, okay? If I can only invest 1% of my income, I can only afford to invest $100 a month. It is better for me to do that while paying off my debt than doing absolutely nothing. You can be debt free and broke, okay? You can pay off all your debt and still have no money. And that's not helpful to you. I wanna make sure that you pay off your debt and you have just a little bit of investments if not more. So you wanna make sure that you do that. Don't listen to anybody that says, don't worry about investing, just pay off all your debt. The only time, I mean the only time that makes sense is if you can pay off debt in like six months, okay? Or you can pay off debt in three months. If you can do it just super quickly, okay, fine. You can make up a year, but a year or more, two years, 10 years, you definitely don't wanna do that, all right? Next here is number three, and that is only only investing in stocks that pay a dividend. Now, for those that don't know, a dividend is a payment that a company will share with you. Say, hey, look, we made a lot of money. You're a shareholder, here's a dollar. That's basically what a dividend is. The company will share profits with you just for being a shareholder. And dividends by themselves, they're nice. It's, it's simple, it's easy, it is passive income. However, 
What you don't want to do is just exclude every other stock that's out there and only focus on companies that have a dividend and just invest in it just because it has a dividend. Those things are not always, it has a dividend, it means it's a good stock. That's not exactly how it works. An example at this time right now, and I say that because five years from now when you're watching this video, things could change. But right now, at t is not a, good, a great stock, okay? It pays an 8% dividend, but the company is down over the last five years more than 20%. Does it make sense for you to lose 20% just to make a dollar in dividends? No. It is not, okay? But if you are not looking at the, the stock, you're just looking at the dividend by itself, you could you could be throwing money off the table or not putting money on the table. There are several great stocks right now that don't pay a dividend at all. Right now, Netflix is good, doesn't pay a dividend. Google is good, doesn't pay a dividend. Tesla, great, doesn't pay a dividend, right? Just because it doesn't pay a dividend doesn't make it bad, and just because it does pay a dividend does not automatically make it good in and of itself. All right, number four here is penny stocks. You, you don't want to invest in penny stocks. Just, just trust me. Just trust me on this one. Penny stocks are companies that are extremely cheap. These are usually companies that are priced $5 and below. The reason why you want to, don't want to do this is really two. One is they're easily manipulated, and this is from people who are unqualified, but usually if there's a stock that's $0.12, cents, that's $0.08, cents, they'll say, look, I will buy thousands and thousands of shares i'm going to get on twitter or reddit or facebook or wherever they want to do this and pump it they call these pump pump and dump schemes and i'll tell people to buy it and buy it and buy it and buy it and what they won't tell you is that they bought it cheaper than what you paid for it and as you guys hop up the stock they'll sell it and leave you holding the bag they have a term for this called bag holders and they'll go they'll go off they'll be rich and leave everybody else just high and dry. This happened a lot with cryptocurrencies in 2020 and 2021. We saw a whole lot of those scams end up in a courtroom as well, and it's something that you, you generally don't wanna do. The second reason is it can sound great when someone tells you that X company was five cents and now it's Amazon. Every stock starts off super cheap and becomes an X, XYZ. One is not true. We have things called IPOs. These are initial public offerings, and that is the price that a lot of these companies start at. For example, Coinbase started at $300 per share, and it is wherever it is today. Okay, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, but there are companies that get priced. You go to the IPO price, and that is where a stock started. For whatever reason, some of these unqualified people get up and tell you that every stock, stock starts at zero and goes to wherever it goes. That's not, that's not how it works. But the other thing is the likelihood, right? This is the second thing that's, that's dangerous is the likelihood of you investing in a stock that's super cheap at $2 and becomes the next Apple. That's like saying that just because I didn't get picked on my sixth grade basketball team that I'm going to be next LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, or Michael Jordan. No. That is not going to happen. I can shoot. But I was not tall enough for any of that stuff. Just because I got cut just like Michael Jordan did does not mean that those two things are correlated and that is going to happen every single time. That's not where I want to bank my future. Whether it's my basketball career that was terrible or the stock market, you don't want to do that to yourself. And a lot of people get caught up in it. And a lot of people also get caught and think, well, it's only $5 and I can own a whole share and I can have 50,000 shares of this thing because it's so cheap. It really doesn't matter how many shares you have, okay? It, it, people feel like it matters. It really doesn't. Okay, don't get caught up in share account and definitely don't get caught trying to invest in companies that are extremely cheap. You buy something cheap, it's usually cheap for a reason. All right, number five here is ex your, your experience, right? Or your expectations, rather, is a better way to look at it. You want to make sure that your expectations are in line. So don't expect ridiculous returns, especially quickly. Okay, that is something that can be very dangerous, especially for new investors, because you can get in and say, look, I spent a thousand dollars on this stock and I want it to be five thousand dollars by the end of this week. No, that's not how investing works. So you want to be very, very careful of that mentality because you can lose money because it didn't blow up. It didn't do the whole rocket ship emoji thing as fast as you thought. This happened to me at my first stock. When I bought City back in 2009, 2010, I had a finance professor that said, you should buy the banks because the banks are always going to be here. They're going to be big and they're not going to fail. The government's not going to let these banks fail. I said, whatever. I'm, I'm a broke sophomore in college, but I got $300. So I guess I wasn't that broke. And I put it all on City. And in about a month, that $300 did not grow. It was still $300 and I was upset and I sold. I should not have sold. Why in the world did I think that $300 was going to double 
in three weeks, in a month. That's not how the stock market always works. You want to be patient, and usually the more patient you are, the better off you're going to be. We have studies going all the way back to the year 1950 that if you hold a stock, on average, on average, if you hold a stock for five years, you have a greater than 90% chance that that stock is going to be positive at the end of five years. But if you do it for a year or less, it's less than 50%. Okay, do you want a 90% chance of success or do you want a 50% chance of success? I'm going to go with the 90 because that is what's going to help me out the best. We've covered several times on this channel, especially T-Mobile, if you want to go back and check those videos out, where I said, uh, T-Mobile is down, Nike is down, not making money yet, but I'm going to keep waiting, right? And six months later, a year later, the stock is up, and I can sell for a profit if that's what I want to do. And we have done those. I've shown you guys screenshots and all that stuff. Now, it doesn't always happen in six months. It doesn't always happen in a year, but you do want to be patient. You don't want to rush in and think that because I saw it on social media, because I saw the screenshot, that stuff is going to blow up. And I've even said this for NVIDIA. If you go back to my Twitter feed and check my, my post on NVIDIA, I said, look, I'm up whatever it was, 700% or something on NVIDIA. But I made sure that I told people I was in NVIDIA for three years. Okay, it wasn't the AI boom. I just invested in NVIDIA yesterday and took off. I have been buying NVIDIA shares for years and they started to pay off. And that's the case for the majority of the stocks I have. Be patient, okay? You don't want to have your expectations warped by what you see on TV, what you see on social media and other places, because that can be something that's an extremely dangerous mistake that can cost you money. Now, of all the bad things I've said, right, all the things you don't want to do, you're probably wondering, okay, well, what should I do? How do I start? What do I buy? I get an entire playlist for new investors right here.